Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today's date is August 3rd, 2023, and we are in session number two for the MCEA 2023-2024 negotiation cycle. Uh, we are currently tonight dealing with TSIA funds. Um, first, I would like to start with introductions. My name is Christine Schrode. I'm the chief negotiator for the school board. Julie Sessa, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Maurice Bonner, Director of Human Resources for the District. Sherry Richardson, Coordinator of Professional Standards. Gary Simmons, Chief Negotiator for FEA. Matt Theobald, President, MCEA. Um, and we have one more who's on the way. She's stuck in traffic. Lonnie Barch, MCEA. Ariane Deneen, MCEA, Treasurer. Susan Rayo, Port Solano Elementary, MCEA. Pat Holtz, MCEA. Mark Hollis, Coordinator of Art, Music, Physical Education, Social Studies, and World Languages. <laughs> Jeff Raymond, Principal, Indian Town Middle School. <laughs> Carter Morrison, Assistant Superintendent for Finance. Okay, uh, so just a little recap of last week. Uh, the school board presented a TSIA plan where funds, the TSIA funds were used to raise the base minimum to 49.5. Um, and then unfortunately upon further inspection, there was a misalignment that occurred. Um, there were, the years of experience didn't match up with the steps on our chart. Um, so it was also difficult to really come up with valid numbers because we don't have all of our new teachers process transfers are still happening so we tonight are technically withdrawing the previous chart that we submitted um, and and uh, replacing it with a new proposed chart um, it mr. Morrison is going to explain the changes and how they occurred and then he's going to explain the presented the new chart um, and that chart still addresses the board's goal of raising that starting salary. It still stays at 49.5. Um, and then it addresses some of that compression in the middle. And obviously we all have to keep in mind we still have um, our regular negotiations where we talk about the rest of the financial piece um, once we close our books. But as we all explained, we have to get these TSIA funds to uh, the Department of Ed very quickly. So we're trying to get this worked out. So, I will have Mr. Morrison explain. So, just to sort of re can someone turn off the light? I think you can see a little bit better. It's kind of blinding. So, this is the proposal that we had put on the table at the last session. We went back and started to triple, double, triple check our work, and we realized that if you look, 48.7. Um, which is the base current base minimum had a skyward step of 0 through 17 here which is incorrect skyward step 1 and when I mean skyward step is every MBU every employee actually has in skyward what we call employee access and when you go into employee access you can actually see uh, what skyward step you're on so we had to go back to the table and rework the numbers the other material change to the schedule is at the time we were using 1,121 MBUs. Those are the, the number of MBUs that were actually processed and had assignments in the system. However, just as a frame of reference for you, last year when we did our TSIA, we paid out monies to 1,204 MBUs. So this year when we looked at my budget, we are at about 1,220 or so MBUs. So that is the estimate that we're using for the new, for the new proposal that we're sent, that we have actually submitted to, to the to the to the association. So, in the file, you'll see where we have the same format, where we um, count the number of people on the various steps. I wanted to point out to you that on the, the average increase, it was around eleven $1 hundred dollars or so. So on cell D15, we made an adjustment and added a couple of MBUs there to come up to the 1220 that you see at the bottom of the schedule here. 
So you'll see on row D89, 1220 MBUs, which just basically carries forward up until up here to G. The new base minimum, as Christine mentioned, is still the proposed 49.5 with an addition of $800 to the base. Now you'll notice that in between here, that was, it is less than what we had proposed the last time. Obviously you have more members sharing the same pot of money, so therefore the amount per MBU, per MBU that's on a, on a certain step uh, will decrease. Um, in here is where sort of the bulk of your MBUs um, lie, right here. Um, and so we tried to put some of the money as best as we could in these buckets to maximize the amounts that are given to those MBUs. So our proposal at this time is to move the base through, the, through 49.5. Yes, there is some compression here and here to try to get us within the $1.25 $1 million that was allocated to us by the state that we were in through the last time. So with that, I don't know if you have any questions for me at this point. Oh, I need to, are you okay with that answer on the record while you were on the? Absolutely. Okay, so the last time, <laughs> Subsequent to our meeting, um, we got an email from the, from the association, hey, we noticed that there are a couple of our members, or one in particular, that was missing. And so, just to explain why that was, is that that member was being transferred from school A to school B. And what we have to do is end the assignment at school A and establish a new assignment at school B. Well, when we ended the assignment on school A, luck of the draw, I went in and pulled my data without school B being established as yet. And so that MBU today um, does not have access to certain um, emails and stuff like that. So we're obviously working on that in the HR department to get everybody set up and, and ready to go. So, which is why I'm now using my budgeted MBU numbers, which is around 1220 that I have in my budget for this year. So with that, I will take some any questions that you might have, Gary. I do. I can show you offline how to work it, get your way through here. Okay. So we can do that if you have any questions. Can someone turn the light back on? Carter, while you're doing that, um, the explanation for, for the missing member, um, they're not going to appear on the proposal that you just sent us right. either, so correct? What okay. I've done is that I've given you a full download of all the data, then I've, the next tab takes out all the duplicates, then the next tab over counts everybody on the, by how many people. It's, it's called, used to call the TEG, you might mm -hmm. teach your experience, teach your experience with with how many members are at each step, and then that then rolls over into the piece that I showed you. I just didn't want to look for somebody if they weren't. If they weren't right, there are yeah. approximately, I want to say about 126 still in the process that we've done this afternoon. Oh, wow. So, do so you want me to leave this up on the screen? Please. Uh, I have it on, on my computer, but for the rest of the team to be able to see it and direct their questions, that would be greatly appreciated. So, Carter, we sent, you did mention the questions that we sent over um, prior to, to coming to this session, um, and it wasn't to overwhelm you by any means, it's just the intention was to be as productive in this process as possible. So, two of those questions, I believe you answered it in your presentation, but I just want to revisit it to make sure. And that was, how do teachers find out what step they're on? And you mentioned something about employee access. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Let me see if I can. Is what 
I'm saying far enough in the body of this room. Pardon? Copies to your left. Okay, thank you. Let me see if I can get a disguise and I'll show it to you. My screen is going to probably look a little bit different from what you see. But does anybody in the association know what I'm talking about when I say employee access when you sign in into Skyward? Mm -hmm. So, Lonnie, may I use you as yeah, a. That's fine. Okay? Because it's going to show you. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> this here says step 10 and it will show your salary so if you look on the, the schedule there mm -hmm. and look yep. at step 10 it should match this 15,900 and then you go across and say okay what is the proposed increase for, for that step again if we, if we agree to the numbers as the way they are presented. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry Carter I wasn't looking at this it's right here this point where the step is it's right here. okay what we did, and I'm glad you brought that up, what we did on the, on the sheet there, we moved you from what we had last year was all these levels, and we went back so we can give the employees the access that they need and something that they can understand. Because when you log into Skyrim, you will see that. Yes? Carter, how did you determine, did you look at what they were making and then assign that step? Or did you look at their... their I what they were making. It's, it's, driven, it's driven by salary. That's an excellent okay, so question. Okay, so you looked at the salary and then said that's the step. Down. Excellent question. Because of performance pay. So mm -hmm. if, if Christine and I are two teachers having the same years of experience, but over the over the years, sorry, Christine, you get needs improvement, and I can have effective, and our salaries are actually <laughs> worth it. So, <laughs> so it is it is the yes. salary that runs. That. Okay. <laughs> So, so for our members who are trying to figure this out, the first thing that they would do was, would be to go on to Skyward and access employee access. And then when they access employee access, it would tell them what step they're on, and that's right now prior to the new raises. And then we'll follow the chart across yes. to see what the increment would be and then what the proposed, got it, got it. Thank you so much, Carter. So I had six questions, and your presentation prior to us asking knocked out two of them already. So we're down three questions that are, are answered. The next one that I have is, what can a teacher do? These, these are questions that were fielded by our, our members after Matt put out a um, summary of the last session. What can a teacher do if the years of experience from the spreadsheet from 712 don't match up with their current years of experience? I think with the revised proposal that we've given, years of experience will happen. And typically what we did, like last year, for example, we kind of negotiated or reviewed with Karen the experience placement <coughs> schedule after the show, mm -hmm. so to speak. So that is the experience placement schedule for new hires to place them. Um, so as I kind of gave in my example of Christine and I, years of experience are, it's difficult to map your years of experience to the salary because of performance pay differences. Thank you. Go ahead, Maurice. And so one of the things that we've done over the last four years and we're gonna do again is when we send out the millage list, we put the number of years of experience that we're showing in the system and we'll uh, do this as we've done in the past. We'll send out a Google sheet if you think that that number is not accurate put fill that information in, and then we can go in and take a look, verify what we have as the verification of years of experience in the system. And we've updated quite, quite a few of them. So 
And you, you guys send out the Google Sheet? That's okay. Yeah, that, that will go out in the email when we send out for millage. Um, so for the September, okay. for the actually September. next month. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're, wow. we're already working with ET on getting that yeah. stuff together. Um, I mean, the data is, is a lot cleaner. Um, we, we have, a, even on the last pass, we had quite a few less people saying that those years were not correct. So we'll continue. Next question I have, and I believe that this question was based off of the previous um, proposal because there were numerous folks that were on 48.7. And this new one only has um, 48.7 at Skyward Step 1 with 236 um, members of the bargaining unit allocated towards Skyward on Skyward Step 1. So this question was how does someone making 48.7 know what raise what their raise is going to be but it's, it's only one way to move now right yes. yeah okay so that's answered boy carter you're, you're swallowing these questions up man last one with this proposal can we guarantee that someone with 15 years of experience will be getting more than an 800 dollar raise that will be a, that sounds like a performance pay question to me. okay Team, do you guys have? Because with 15 years of experience, it depends on what your salary is going to be. I, so what may work for you may be a different number for that person. Right. As a performance bill over the years. Yeah. I guess the, the, the thing when I look at this that, that I have questions about is when you look at, so everything seems to like progress from, from the steps until you get to that little chunk at 7, 8, and 9. Mm -hmm. And then that little chunk right in there. I know it's not a lot of people. But they, they seem to be kind of getting, and it's sort of, you know, you, how you split up the money that's there. Yeah. Would it have been possible when I look at 789, right. and then I turn around and I look at 7, Seven's getting a bigger chunk? Could, 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 could that money be dispersed a little so, bit? So that would be, so that would be your counter proposal. Okay. Okay. All right. I just. So I, I just wanted to know if there was some reasoning behind that, but it's it's what, what I'm thinking. You were just trying to disperse the money yeah, we the way you saw. Okay. Have most okay. Any other questions? Okay. But I still think that's a way to do a little better. Just a question. I mean, that's conversation we need to have. Anyone? Do you guys have a good question? Sure. No, I don't. I'm the holder of the mic. Get it Darn it, missed my opportunity for a mic. And you you were um, generous enough to include that first proposal on this. Yes. Yeah. So you have a frame of reference. I see. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yes, we would um, appreciate an opportunity to, to caucus. Okay. Thank you so much. Can I? Yeah, it's not. All right. It, it's not. It's uh, just it, in here. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you so much. So um, first and foremost, uh, most appreciative of the opportunity to caucus with the team. We've reviewed uh, the, the more recent proposal of, of the school board, and uh, we want to, to um, take an opportunity to do a deep dive into this proposal. Um, Carter was gracious enough to show us how to manipulate numbers in the field boxes um, that's connected to um, the mathematical calculations related to the excess and deficit. So we're just gonna take a look at this proposal without having you all hold up in a, in a room um, while we do it. We're gonna um, meet offline as a bargaining team to discuss this 
proposal thoroughly, and then we'll have a response for you in the next bargaining session if that's suitable for you all. Mm -hmm. so that we have, um, the two I think we yeah. could do multiple yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really like having to plan yeah. it out. I don't think we need to do that necessarily on camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Closing I, out the session? Yes, I'm in agreement with that. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you.